viewers welcome back in this video we are going to learn about stateful set component in kubernetes by end of this video you will get complete knowledge of what is stateful set component in kubernetes and where it is used and why we need it when we have the deployment component and finally we will look into what is the difference between stateful set component and deployment component in kubernetes So what is stateful set in Kubernetes? It is a component in a Kubernetes which is used for stateful applications. So before getting to know what is stateful set in Kubernetes, let's look into what is the difference between stateful application and stateless application. Stateful application stores the data to keep track of application state. Basically, the databases like MySQL, Postgres, Oracle, and NoSQL databases like uh, MongoDB, Cassandra, and all other NoSQL databases comes under this category. On the other hand, the stateless application doesn't store the data to maintain the state. The each request received by the stateless application is completely new. The applications developed using programming languages like Java, Python, all this comes under stateless application category. Basically, the stateless application doesn't depend on previous request. Each request received by stateless application completely new and it is just redirects the data to stateless application. So the stateful application has the capability to store the data. It does the job. So it creates and updates the data based on previous request and queries the data from the storage. To handle each request, it depends upon previous data. For example, any user sends the request to the stateless application like Java application, Java application redirects that request to the stateful application. So stateful application queries the data from storage and gives the response back to the stateless application. Because of these differences, the both applications deployed using different components in Kubernetes. The stateful applications deployed using stateful set component and stateless applications deployed using deployment component. They both manage replication of parts in the same way. And also the data persistence and the configuration of persistence storage also done in the same way. Then the question is why we need different components to deploy each type of these applications. Let's discuss about differences between deployment component and stateful set component. The replication of stateful applications is more difficult than stateless application. It has some rules and there are some requirements that we need to follow to deploy the stateful applications. Let us say we have one MySQL database part that handles the request from a Java application. This Java application deployed using deployment component. Whenever Java application receives the request from a client, it just redirects the request to the MySQL database. This request can be for to read the data or delete the data or update the data. Let us say if you want to scale up the Java application into three parts so that it can handle multiple requests from client application. In parallel, we want to scale up the MySQL database as well so that we can have the three parts of MySQL database so that it can handle multiple requests from Java application. Here, replication of parts for Java application is pretty straightforward. There won't be many rules, so it is very easy because they are interchangeable and creation of parts for Java application is pretty straightforward because they can create randomly uh, with a random number. And also there will be one service for all the parts to load balance the requests. If we want to delete any part of Java application, it can be randomly chosen and can be deleted. The replication of parts and scaling up and scaling down of stateful set application is not straightforward. It's very difficult because the parts are not identical and cannot be interchangeable and we cannot create randomly the parts for stateful set application and we cannot delete them randomly. 
The replica parts are not identical. Each part has its own identity and cannot be interchangeable. Every part will be given a required and its own unique identity. That is what actually stateful set does on a part different from deployment component and maintains a sticky part identity for each of its part and this identity is immutable and cannot be changeable. Every part has its own immutable identity which cannot be interchanged. Every part is created with same container specification but they are not interchangeable. Every part has persisted identity and will be assigned same identity when it is rescheduled. It means whenever part dies and the new part is created but the identity will not be changed, the same identity is assigned to the new part. So why we need this kind of technique here? Why we need to have this kind of requirement? Why can't we have interchangeable like a deployment component? This is what I wanted you to understand how we do the scaling of databases generally. For example, if we have one MySQL pod that is useful for writing the data and reading the data. If we add another MySQL pod, we, it cannot act in the same way. Because if we allow the multiple MySQL instances to read and write the same data, we will end up in data inconsistency. Instead of that, we will allow only one MySQL pod to have the permission to write and read the data and we give multiple MySQL parts to read the same data completely no problem. And the data replication should be done from database 1 to database 2 and the part that has the capability to write and read is called as master. Rest of the parts called as slaves. Here I want you to make a point. So here we don't have the identical parts each and every part is different from another. That is, we have one master pod and we'll have the multiple slave pods. There is also a difference between slave pods in terms of storage. Actually, these pods do not have access to the same physical storage. Even though they use the same data, but they are not using the same physical storage of the data. Each pod has its own replicas of data storage each one of them can access its own data storage. This means that each pod replica at any time must have the same data as other ones. In order to achieve that, they have to synchronize the data continuously. Since the master is the only one can change the data, the slaves need to take care of their own data storage. So the slaves must know about the change so that they can update their own data storage to be up to date for the next query request. Let us say we have one master pod and two slave pods. What happens when new slave pod replica joins the existing setup? The new pod also has to synchronize the data from its previous pod. The new pod also needs to create its own data storage and has to synchronize the data. First, it clones the data from the previous pod not from any other pod in the setup. Once it has the up-to-date data clone, it will start synchronizing the data continuously. This is the point where I want to stress, you actually have a temporary storage for the stateful application and not for the persisted data at all. Since the data gets replicated between the pods in their own data storage, there is a possibility that all the data will be lost when all the pods die. For example, if stateful set get deleted or cluster crashed or all the nodes where all these replica parts are running crashed and every part dies, at the same time the data will be lost. Therefore, maintaining the persistent storage for the stateful set applications is the best practice. Losing the data in case of database applications is not acceptable. Even though all the pods die at the same time and even the stateful set component is completely deleted, even all the nodes that are where this, all the pods are running is wiped out, still the data is survived which is stored in the data storage that is the persistent data storage. You will not lose the data when you store the data in persistent volumes. Since 
the persistent volume's life cycle is not tied with any other components like a deployment or stateful set. In order to implement this, you need to configure persistent volume for your stateful set. Since each pod has its own data storage, that is persistent volume, that is backed up by its own physical storage, which includes synchronized or replicated data, and also the state of the pod. Each pod has its own state, which has information about the pod is master or slave and other metadata information. All of this data is stored in the pod's own storage. That means if the pod dies or replaced, the persistent pod identifiers make sure that the storage volume gets reattached to the replacement pod. Since the storage has state in addition to the replicated data. The attachment to work, we need remote storage. Because if a pod rescheduled from one node to another node, the previous storage must be available on the second node as well. You cannot do this using local volumes because they are tied to a specific node. The last difference between deployment and a stateful set, which is that I have already mentioned, the pod identifier. Every pod has its own identifier. In deployment, every pod gets name as pod name hyphen some random hash number. On the other end, stateful set will have the fixed name with some ordered number at the end. It is like a pod name hyphen the number numeral or any number starting with zero. So each and every additional pod will get the next number. Well, if you want to create stateful set pods for PostgreSQL database with four replicas, the pod's name will be like this, PostgreSQL 0, 1, 2, 3. The first one is called as a master and rest of the pods called as slaves. Here I want to mention one important point. The, the first pod creation is not yet finished and is, it's not in the state as up and running. The next pod will not be created. Creation of first pod failed or if it is in the status of pending, the next pod will not be created. And while deleting the stateful set or scaling down from 4 to 1 or 0, it will be in the reverse order. Deletion will happen from the last one to the first one. The first, the PostgreSQL 3 will be deleted and 2 and 1. And if you want to delete the, the first one as well, that also will be deleted. Deletion order will be in the reverse order. All these techniques are in place to protect the state and data of the stateful application. And also, each pod in a stateful set gets its own DNS name, that is a DNS endpoint from the service. So there is a service name just like how the deployment will have. In addition to that, it will have its own service name for each and every individual pod. So which is made up of a pod name and a service name. So these two characteristics, a predictable name and the DNS name. So this ensures that whenever the pod dies or recreated, the only the IP address will be changed, but the DNS name and the name will not be changed. So these are immutable characteristics of the stateful set component. So that's what I said earlier, it's a sticky identity. The sticky identity ensures that each replica will retain its state and role even when it dies or recreated. Now you understand how much complex it is replicating stateful applications like setting up the databases with its persistent storage, all this stuff. But Kubernetes helps you in setting up of all these things. But still, you need to do a lot of things yourself, which Kubernetes doesn't provide you out of the box, like cloning the data and synchronization and configurations for this data, and also the remote storage availability and managing the backup of the storage, all those stuff. So this things doesn't provide you by the Kubernetes. You have to do it yourself. So that's the reason stateful applications are not perfect candidate for containerized environments. But on the other hand, stateless applications perfectly fits in containerized environments because it doesn't have any state and also the data dependency. So it's just we need to process the code. So rest of the things will be taken care of by the Kubernetes. And also the scaling and replicating the applications, those stateful applications are super easy when there is no state and there is no data dependency. So that's the reason actually 
stateless applications are the best candidate in containerized environments. Hope I have covered all the main concepts with respect to stateful set component in Kubernetes. We have seen uh, what is stateful set and deployment and the differences between a stateful set component and deployment component. And finally, we have looked at how complexity it is uh, deploying stateful applications in Kubernetes environment. If you have any questions or feedback, put them in comment section. I will get back to you as soon as possible. I really would love to see your comments. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you have more interest on Kubernetes concepts, watch this playlist displaying here. Hope you enjoyed this video and let's see in the next video. Until then, goodbye.